Have you guys ever watched a video podcast and wondered how they switch so seamlessly between angles? Well, today I'm gonna unveil the magic behind it using Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's dive in. All right, I've started a new project inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, and what I've done is I've moved in all my footage, which are three angles. There's my wide angle, I then have my angle of my guest, and then I have the angle of myself. And I brought in my high quality audio, which I recorded using the Shure SM7Bs, and I record that uh, using GarageBand. You gotta remember that with all of these three angles, you wanna make sure that you have recorded audio. So I have this one recording on a camera, I have this angle recording on a camera, and I have this one recording just from my phone, but I have audio recording on all three angles. And that's really important because you need audio in order for the software to know how to sync the clips because it uses the audio to sync the clips. So what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna put the footage directly on the timeline. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hold shift and highlight all three of my angles. I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna select create multi-cam sequence. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose a name. In this case, I'm using podcast multi-cam. And then I wanna make sure that audio is selected in track one. What this is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that all of the audio from all three of the different angles are synced up in my multi-cam sequence. And then from there, I'm just gonna select okay. It only took about five seconds and it went ahead and it processed all of the clips and it created a multi-cam sequence. All of the original clips are inside this new folder called Process Clips if I wanted to access those. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take my multi-cam sequence, I'm gonna drag it onto my timeline. From here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna select multi-cam view so you guys can see all of the different angles. If this is not showing up here, in your options just go over here to the plus sign select the button editor and then you're going to want to go ahead and select multi-cam view for me i have that already in here so i'm going to go ahead and open that up and you'll see here now you can see all three of the camera angles i have my first camera angle which is the wide shot i then have the camera angle of my guest and then i have my third angle which is just of me from there i'm going to take the high quality audio that I recorded with my Shure SM7Bs, and I'm gonna put that on the timeline. And then I'm gonna highlight my good audio with the audio that recorded from my cameras. And then I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna go down and select synchronize. From here, you wanna make sure that audio is selected. Select okay. And now that's gonna go ahead and sync the audio. So it's gonna make sure that the good audio is synced with the audio that's coming from your multi-cam sequence. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to delete the audio from my multi-cam sequence. I did that by just simply dragging the high quality audio over the audio from my multi-cam sequence. I can also just select that, right click, make sure that I unlink that audio from my main multi-cam sequence clip, and then I can go ahead and delete it and I can slide that up. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight my footage and my new audio. I'm gonna right click, and then I'm gonna make sure that I select the link, because that's gonna make sure that that audio never slides anywhere and becomes unsynced with the actual footage itself. It's a good idea when you're setting up to shoot a podcast and make a loud sound. Oftentimes I'll just clap or I'll have sometimes me and my guests clap. What that does is it makes sure that all of the microphones and the cameras and the, you know, the microphones that are set up on my cameras, they all pick up that audio and it's going to cause a spike in the audio waveform. And that makes it a lot easier for the software to synchronize all of the clips using the audio. Okay, so now I have all three of my camera angles put into a multi-cam sequence. I also have my high quality audio linked to the footage. From here, it's just as simple as watching the playback. And then what I like to do is you can see here, um, angle one is gonna be in the upper left, angle two, is the upper right angle three is the lower left and angle four had i shot a fourth camera would have been in the bottom right so all you have to do now is you can watch it back and as somebody begins to talk whatever angle i want to be shown i can just select one two or three on the keyboard and it will automatically make the cut and it will jump back and forth between my camera angles keep in mind now I can see all the camera angles myself on the left, but what you're seeing here on the right is a preview of what the final video is gonna look like. So let me just go ahead and I'll edit a little bit of this so you can see what I mean. Remember, 
as I'm running through this, I'm just gonna select one on my keyboard for this angle on the top left, two on my keyboard for the angle of my guest, and three on the keyboard for the angle of myself. So let's go ahead and edit a little bit of this. God's gonna save me. Mm -hmm. And then the, the jet, jet ski, ski comes by, and the helicopter, helicopter comes by. I had I heard that, that story, story like, like and now the what we're seeing before. here is the angle number two. And I recognized her. You know, maybe over some time, yeah, I want to just, like, just sort of listen to one now. again. Yeah. He dies, <laughs> goes to heaven. <laughs> oh, that's right. How come you didn't save me? And God says, I sent you a boat. I sent you a jet ski. I sent you a guy in a helicopter. Like, you didn't take any of that stuff. You didn't take any help. Yeah. And I had heard that story just the week before. And so after she talked to me, you know, we talked. We had a really good conversation. Okay, I'll pause it there. And now from the zoom in on the timeline, you can see here, the software actually made all of these cuts for me. So as long as I'm in the process of cutting, and I had heard that story just you won't be able to week physically before. see the cuts. Watch so one. After she talked two, to me, you know, we talked, we had a really good conversation. Cutting, but as soon as um, I stop, it makes all the cuts for me. So let's just say I made a mistake here. And I cut it in a spot that I didn't like, I actually wanted a different angle. Let's just say that I have it set here to show Isaac, which is my angle number two. And then it goes right into angle number one again. Let's just say that I felt like I did that a little bit too soon. You can actually go over here to your tools, click on that, hold it down and go over to your rolling edit tool. And you'll see here these two um, arrows. And what that does is you can actually drag where the cut mark is and it won't change anything else about the video. It'll just change where you went from angle two to angle three, but it doesn't throw off the timing or anything like that. And I recognized her to be my yeah, and just so judgment. That. The other thing you can do is let's just say I realized off the jump that this is just, you know, an angle that I didn't want. One of these was just an angle I didn't want. So let's just say I'm, I realized off the jump that this is not the angle I wanted to use for the shot. All I have to do is bring my playhead over to the clip that I want to change and then simply click the camera angle that I want to change it to. What that does is it'll go ahead and change it to the other camera angle. See? So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll actually watch this back in two times speed and I'll go through and I'll just make all my cuts because honestly, it actually looks a little bit more natural if you don't cut right before somebody starts talking. It's usually better to cut kind of right after somebody starts talking. In editing, they call those L cuts and J cuts. So right when Isaac starts talking, if I cut to him a second or two after he starts talking, it actually looks more natural than if I try to anticipate when he's gonna speak and cut to him early. And that's basically how I edit all my podcast episodes. And then I put an outro and an intro in there, which I created from a Storyblocks template. You can always have somebody on Fiverr create an outro or an intro for you uh, if you don't know how to create one using a template. I then usually slap some color grading on it. And then of course I'll always export two versions. I export a version as a YouTube video. And then of course I export the audio version, which you can download on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, pretty much wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys wanna know how you can do something similar inside the free CapCut desktop app, I will go ahead and link that video in the description. Thank you again for watching. If you found it helpful, make sure that you go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you guys all on the next one.